Hey, SITC fam. If you like what you're hearing, don't forget to rate us five stars on any podcast platform. Leave us a review wherever you can. And don't forget to subscribe to LL Giselle on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram and find us on Facebook at Sonographers in the Cities. Welcome back to another episode of Sonographers in the Cities. I'm Lynn. And I'm Giselle. What's up, everybody? (laughs) Today, we're going to talk about school and prerequisites and classes. And it's just a quick episode where we're going to tell you guys what classes we took in our programs, what classes you can expect to take in your prereqs or in your programs. And it's just a tiny more specific episode because we get specific questions that we want to answer on this episode about prerequisites in classes and things that people are confused about going into ultrasound. So let's start off with Lynn, who is a new grad. So she has more, I guess you could say she could collect her memories much easier than mine since mine was like six (laughs) years ago. Six years ago, I was in school, you guys. So, Lynn. Lynn, Yes. What would you like to tell them about your program? So, did you actually have prereqs to get into your program? Or did you get all your stuff in your ultrasound program? So, my program specifically, um, I didn't need any prereqs. My program has prerequisites within the program which is why one of the reasons why I chose this program, because I wanted to get started on my sonography journey as soon as, as fast as I can, the moment I decided that I'm going to pursue sonography, as well as um, it's just easier for me. And uh, just for like knowing myself, I don't want to apply to a different school, go through the prereqs, just so I can apply to another school so that I can be in the program, if that makes sense. I just want it to be efficient. I want it to be quick. And my program provided that. Yeah. And one quick note I want to say, because I do, uh, like Giselle, receive a lot of questions about what classes should uh, you take for to apply to a DMS programs or for specific programs. Um, I just want to say that uh, please pay attention to what uh, degree you're getting because getting a certificate varies from an associate's, varies from a bachelor's because with more, with the higher degree, you will be required more classes to take, if that makes sense, more credits to obtain that degree. Yeah. So you're saying like if you're doing a certificate, associates, a bachelor's, a master's, which you did a certificate program. Yes. So it makes sense that all your classes were embedded in that program. And for you, you are also another special story because you already had a degree prior yes. to going into ultrasound. Yeah. So that's a different thing between someone who already has a degree and then Mm -hmm. someone who's coming straight out of high school who's like what classes should I take you know and so Lynn has a good point where you guys need to find out where you're at in your life and if you need to figure out what program you're going to or what route you're taking because there is obviously a lot of different routes to take to become a sonographer decide which route it is and then see the specifics how to do that so Okay. She already had her bachelor's. Yes. And I, when I went into ultrasound, I was getting my bachelor's. So I was. A so what pre- classes did you have to take? Yeah, I was a pre-nursing student. So, you know, anything in the healthcare field, which is part of the, what is that? You always say it. It's part allied of allied health. Yeah. Part of allied health. So a lot of the allied health professions have the same prerequisites, especially if you go to like a college 
like let's say I went to UNLV or if someone's going to like Stanford or um you know LSU wherever Arizona State University you will have to take prerequisites usually to get into your program like that's kind of the more common way of going into getting a bachelor's degree um, but even associates, they're going to have some prereqs for you to take before you get into the actual program. So if you're one of those people, which is like me, I had to take, you know, a bunch of stuff for pre-nursing. And those are prereqs to get into the nursing program. Now, when I switched over to ultrasound, a lot of those classes in the pre-nursing prereqs actually worked for the pre-CMI program, which for me, CMI is comprehensive medical imaging. So at UNLV, the program is the ultrasound program, but to get into that program, you had to be a pre-CMI major, which sounds confusing, but it's CMI because you could go either x-ray, you can go CT, you know, nuclear medicine, ultrasound, whatever. So my prereqs for nursing did go towards ultrasound, but also there were more specific ones to ultrasound. So a lot of the classes that you will have to take for prereqs or to get into your program, if you're at a school like mine, was more so like, you know, English, math, math. yeah, sciences, physics. physics. You know, all those basic classes that you pretty much took in high school, but now you have to take it at a college level course. Um, so you probably did some of those, I'm sure, when you were doing I did. your bachelor's. Yeah, I did. Uh, with my program, I was able to transfer um, some of those classes to my certificate. So I didn't have to take that during my program. Mm -hmm. My classmates who are taking their associates or bachelors, depending on which degree they want to get, they had to take that along with the uh, sonography um, classes that we were taking at the time. So they had extra um, load of classes to do while I didn't have to because I transferred uh, my credits over. Yeah. And Another class I wanted to add is human hum humanities. No, oh. <laughs> was it anatomy and physiology? Anatomy, anatomy and physiology. That and is a yes. That's a big uh, course for sonography school as well. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that some during my research when I was looking for programs, some programs require chemistry, others mm -hmm. don't. Yep. Um, I specifically avoided that because I hate chemistry. <laughs> Chemistry's hard, y'all. It is. And I'm trying to think. And then the if you're taking a bachelor's, of course, you have your general education classes that you have mm -hmm. to take. Electives. Um, so uh, yes, those electives. They just um, want to make money. <laughs> yes. But also it helps you to be well rounded. It That's does. how I think of it. Mm -hmm. So just think about that when you are applying to your programs, because those are the, um, each degree have different requirements, different um, amount of credits to get that degree. So those classes depend on that as well. Yeah, it's kind of a unique situation because when you do go into college, let's say you're going for your associates or bachelors, um, because I can't speak about a certificate, but Lynn mm -hmm. can. But when you go into associates and bachelors, they're gonna say, Hey, okay, when you talk to a counselor, um, they're gonna be like, Okay, so what classes can you bring us from high school? Some people mm -hmm. take college level courses in high school. If you're someone who didn't have any college courses in high school, you can't transfer them over, right? But if you did, you can transfer them over. So for those of you in high school, those AP classes, yeah, try to get those college classes so that you can zoom through college faster. Um, so I got a few of those actually taken care of when I went to college, but I still had to take a lot of different classes. Sometimes you can test out of classes. People mm -hmm. ask me all the time, do I need to take math to be a sonographer like do I need to know math to be a sonographer and I'll tell you right now I don't do math as a sonographer mm -hmm. 
And when I do, there there's like it's a calculator for APIs. Very basic. <laughs> Yeah, or like switching decimals, you know, yes, from centimeters to millimeters. So truly, I struggled with math in college because to get into the sonography program, you had to have a specific math to take specific ultrasound classes. Like mm -hmm. I had to have a certain math class to take the certain physics class. So that's where they got me. It was like, okay, so now I have to take this math to get into this math that's required for that physics, which is required for that ultrasound program. And you're like, geez, you know? But yeah. what I tell people all the time is like, you just try to get through the class and you try to pass a class and then you pass a class and you're checking off a box. You're checking off a list. What classes do I need to take? But we wanted this uh, episode to sh show you guys and tell you that there are going to be other classes besides ultrasound for you to have to take to become a sonographer. But what really matters, you know, obviously, yes, get good grades in your prereqs. But what really matters is once you apply to your program or you get into your program, are those classes in your program? So you want to do the best to be, you know, somebody who has really good GPA. If the GPA is a deciding factor for you to get into your ultrasound program, mm -hmm. take classes that you know you can pass and be good at, uh, especially for those elective classes. And then pay more attention to the anatomy and physiology classes because that's where a lot of people have a hard time. And the a and is something that, people try to just get through to pass but if you really soak up that information it will help you in ultrasound definitely um, what are some ultrasound classes that you took so people can kind of be, get a feel of how they're gonna see ultrasound in their di the didactics like the classes that they're going to be studying for ultrasound classes mm -hmm. are you in talking about are you talking about like the concentrations, like echovascular that I took? Mm -hmm. But well, before I get to ultrasound classes, when you mentioned the math class that you're you have to get to get to this math class mm -hmm. to get to this to your program, it made me think of physics because oh, yeah. I get a lot of questions um, from like prospective students saying how hard is ultrasound physics because normal physics like they don't like or they don't hate they hate or they don't do well mm -hmm. and um that's the same I think the same mentality with physics yeah. I think I hate normal like regular physics like yeah. in high school in college it's like mm -hmm. absolute worst but when it comes to ultrasound physics it's quite different yeah and I learned to understand it very quickly and I I actually like ultrasound physics. Meanwhile, I still don't understand physics at all. <laughs> regular even, physics. Like regular physics, even though I, you know, I took the class. So yeah. um, physics is one of those, like Giselle said, where you have to kind of like, suck it up mm -hmm. and make sure you do well so that you can get into the program. Oh, I can but, go on and on about yeah. physics, which but, we do uh, have an episode on physics. Yes, I find it. we do. And I'm sure we will make another episode again. But uh, for those of you who are listening, if you're scared about physics and having like the regular physics uh, prereqs intimidate you, mm -hmm. please don't. Just know that it's a stepping stone to get to where you want to go. Yeah, there there is an episode on physics that we talk about this, and we do have another episode yes. coming up that's about physics. So we'll talk all about physics. It's a big yes. deal. Um, yes. But yeah, physics and math, those are the two number one questions we get about pre prereqs and classes. And honestly, just don't even think about that. You know you mm -hmm. want to become a sonographer. You're going to work hard. You're going to study hard no matter what class it is, even if you have chemistry. Like we don't have to know chemistry, but I had to take chemistry as a prereq. Yes. So it's just part of the whole education thing mm -hmm. and it'll help you be a better student. You'll learn your study techniques and all of that. But all yeah. the prereqs and classes are there 
just because that's the education system that we live in and you have to just do that. If you yes. are able to take something where you don't have to do that, like Lynn, who already was able to do a certificate, you're in an even better shape because then you won't have to do a lot of the other rando classes. But I, I do remember taking in college like random classes. I even took but Spanish. No, in my undergrad, I did take random classes mm -hmm. like um, midwife class midwife <laughs> part of the nursing program it was an elective but mm -hmm. I learned a lot from that I mean it actually really helped me in OB mm -hmm. but yeah. it's just like random electives so if you like again like for a bachelor's where you have more options for electives just for you to like reach that credit limit you know to get the bachelor's it's just those random classes yeah. yeah. Anyways, back to your question about ultrasound classes. I just mm -hmm. want to mention physics because it's a big deal. Um, ultrasound focus classes that I had, obviously ultrasound physics, um, the concentrations or specialty that I went in for echo and vascular. And that was like into two classes, echo one, echo two, echo three, vascular one, vascular two. And um, because my program includes not just echovascular, but as well as abdomen, not abdomen general, and OB, GYN, um, so that I'm able to sit for RDMS as well. Um, we also have those classes. So that takes up 22 months. I think those are the very focused um. It took class. you 22 months to do all of those specific classes? 22 months, like, in, in like, the curriculum. But yeah. I didn't have to do the last month. So technically, mm -hmm. for me, it was 21 months. Okay. Um, what about you? What ultrasound classes did you take in your program? Uh, so my program, there's a lot of people who listen who are in Las Vegas. There's mm -hmm. two places you can become an ultrasound technologist out here. One is mm -hmm. CSN. That's the College of Southern Nevada. That's an associate's program. And the other one is the bachelor's at UNLV, which is what I did. You can go online to these programs on their websites and see what classes they require, which is a very simple thing. And I'm sure you could do that for any school out there. Um, but for mine... We don't do echo, so we just do general and vascular. So my program is a little bit different because they only taught us, you know, one class each section. So like I had an abdomen focus class, an mm -hmm. OBGYN focus class, a vascular focused class, and a physics class. Well, it was like physics, SPI, like machine, all that stuff. So I really, only, I think we really only had like four or five ultrasound classes at UNLV. Um, and the other one was the, the one that everyone goes into. Where are they? The one where they talk about like, oh, cross-sectional anatomy. You guys can tell that I haven't been in school in a long time. Oh, yes. I also have that <laughs> class too. <laughs> yeah. Cross-sectional anatomy, which everyone needs to probably take. Yes. Uh, yes. Because... That's required. Yeah, that's how you learn anatomy, basically, um, in imaging. Yes, so, imaging anatomy. Yeah. So, and I had to take a radiology class that taught all of the modalities. It was like RAD 100 or something. Mm. But those were the only classes that I had to take. And I think mine was probably much shorter than yours because I had one year of like classes and then one year of clinicals and so what we do is we do one year of classes we do all the classes we do the lab and when we're in lab we're not in classes so it's all straight classes then mm -hmm. lab and then they put you into clinicals and you're doing clinicals with no classes now at csn you do classes and clinicals in between you're like one day you're in class one day you're in clinicals one day you're in class and i know a lot of people have programs like that too that's my program yeah so Every program is different, as you can mm -hmm. tell, and you just have to go with the flow with whatever program you choose and decide, because ultimately that's the program you choose to go to, 
which is why research is very important. We'll talk about other types of programs in the future and other episodes. But yeah, my specific classes, there really weren't that many uh, for ultrasound because in ultrasound, you really do learn out in the field. And yes. go look at Lynn's newest post on Instagram. <laughs> well, <laughs> want to share what that is all about? So, yes, uh, I <laughs> posted, uh, ex- you know, those expectations as a new grad versus reality. Like you get this reality check now that you're in the real world. And I liked um, it. I liked your post. It was a good thank one. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Please check it out. <laughs> it's, you know, it's my most recent post. Um, if you're listening to this on uh, today. <laughs> <laughs> if that makes sense i'm so burned out from work <laughs> if you read uh, the post you'll understand <laughs> life is an ultrasound Anyways, technology um, basically the sum the summary of the post is that i had an expectation as a new grad finishing a program and then coming into work i'm slowly lear- learning that you know the expectations that i have are um how can i say it? it's not being met <laughs> but it's uh there are more unexpected unexpected things that I outside of scanning outside of me trying to be a better sonographer that is affecting me to be a better sonographer if that makes Mm. sense Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah go check Um, out her post (laughs) it's funny because I was writing notes about this last night for a YouTube video and I was like it was like you know it's for a future video so I won't say much about it but it was like it had to do with a lot of what you're saying in there, you know? Yes. It's just like, it's things that you can't um, control. control because yeah. it's literally in every single workplace that you go. It's just, mm-hmm. no, it's just a matter of how you deal with it. And I guess me writing this post is one way of me dealing with it <laughs> because I don't know, it's, it's tough. It's tough yeah, being a new grad and it's tough, tough being... Uh, trying to adjust to everything yeah but you're doing just great yes I'm sure I think doing this podcast with you really helps it's like my therapy time you know (laughs) talking about uh programs and going back to school and it's kind of making me reminisce you know how it was two years ago when it was easier when it was actually (laughs) when it was easier but it was also hard school stress was easier than work stress yeah. And um doing this and talking about ultrasound mm-hmm. and especially with someone who knows what you're going through yes. because it's a different type of like you could talk to someone like a nurse or mm-hmm. even a doctor about it but like they won't understand. They don't know they different. Don't. It's different. Like yeah. we can't understand them and their stresses but you know late, you know. Yeah, just like how I told you so uh before we started this podcast I scanned a 400 pound patient today and she's like that's me every day <laughs> welcome, I said welcome to my life every yes, single said, day to- <laughs> my hospital, now it is my every single day yeah my hospital gets I think the most um sickest patients unfortunately in the valley not even the valley all around Las Vegas because everyone that I've spoken to is not from Las Vegas every patient that I've scanned is from somewhere else helicoptered in airlifted in ambulanced over hours hours drive and it's 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 wild it's every patient I scan is really like I don't know how to even say it not bad but like there's something wrong Challenging. with each patient yeah everyone has cirrhosis or like everyone has soci- ascites societies mm-hmm. ascites <laughs> or or plural fusion the fusion around the heart is called a cardi pericardium pericardial fusion yeah so because you know i i always see the echo techs also pushing their machines around yes. and i talk to them and i'm like how do you guys do it <laughs> you know but ultrasound is hard. So just remember when you're in your classes, you know, you're, you're focused on that and trying to get good grades so that eventually you can learn ultrasound well. But that's not where you learn everything. 
And you're not going to graduate and know everything when you graduate from that program. Yes. Half of the things you won't even learn in your first year of doing ultrasound. So Lynn has no. so much more to learn. She still has a lot, a long ways to go. But... I feel like I'm in quarter one of my program. Yeah. With working. <laughs> If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, I heard it wasn't until you hit five years. But I don't like know. Like you? <laughs> I, I, I'm going Just on I was going year. through a five-year itch. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been doing sonography now for six years, but I've worked at the same place for mm -hmm. five years. Uh, and they say after five years, apparently, your brain's like, hmm, what you doing? What I'm you trying doing? to get Giselle to come to New York. That would be fun. Then we'll be sonographers in a city. Yeah, in not a cities. <laughs> <laughs> sonographers in a city. And you know what's funny? Someone was like, one of my coworkers was like, we should have a reality TV show. Like, that's I what I said. Her. Yeah, I was like, that's what my friend said. And I think we should do it and like show, well, if someone's a producer out there and you're listening to this, you know, show different We're pitching lives. the idea to you. <laughs> Yeah, show different levels <laughs> of ultrasound technologists because it's actually much different than they show on the medical shows. And there's yes. drama. I I guarantee there is drama. There's, there's always drama. drama. So <laughs> dramas between sonographers, dramas between yeah. sonographers and doctors, between mm -hmm. sonographers and nurses. Yep. Even between their doctors, the doctors and their nurses. Yep. Or MPAs. Yeah, there's just it's it's a great it's, field to be in, drama. but there's there's drama in any job. So yeah, <laughs> off to our other tangent. Anyway, <laughs> okay, yes. back to what we were saying. Um, <laughs> classes prereqs. Yes. I hope you enjoyed our tangents. Uh, classes prereqs. Mm -hmm. Um, it boils down to what program you're looking for, what types of credentials, mm -hmm. not credentials. Mm -hmm. Uh, what is it? Degree yes <laughs> you're aiming for <laughs> yeah and uh, please do your research but yes. the classes that we mentioned are the uh main classes that will uh be on the prereqs for almost all programs out there in mm -hmm. the U.S. yeah so we highly recommend you if you do have a question which we always get is what classes should I take if I want to be a sonographer or like, what what should I study in advance, right? And it's always going to be anatomy and physiology and physics. Like those two are the main ones. A and P, yes. physics. And then potentially, if you know you want to become a sonographer for realsies, you know, look at videos online for how to read ultrasounds or look at ultrasound imaging anatomy-wise because there's lots of free stuff out there on YouTube, on the internet. There's protocols on there. You can learn and become a sonographer just by reading a lot of things on the internet or just prepare yourself for the classes you're about to take because that will also go a long way. We've had an episode where somebody asked us what you should do to prepare to go into school. If you really, really want to prepare to go into school, we always say this, do that. But Enjoy your time before you go into your program because your program is going to be challenging and you're going to be studying a lot. Happy studying, everybody. And if you have any questions, don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Sonographers in the Cities. And, and Facebook. And Facebook. And comment below. And subscribe to yourselves channel. Thank you very much. Yes. Hit the like button guys <laughs> thank you so much for listening we hope you enjoy this episode and we'll see you and talk to you in the next episode yes bye. Bye. thank you thank you for connecting through sounds with us we appreciate you and can't wait to connect with you again next time